Welcome, everybody, to another episode of The China Show. What is it, episode 194? 194. We are really getting there. We have quite a lot to talk about today. We've got this huge military secret that China has um, begrudgingly had leaked. They're not very happy about that. We've got... Leaked, I see what you did there. Yeah, exactly. Like a leaky faucet. Mm -hmm, something like that. We've got this whole thing where Apple's airdrop has been hacked. We have to talk about that in China. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, of course, we've got a lot... Of other things in between. So I think we should just saunter right into it with what's new. What do you say? Yes. This we is, have uh, nice, nice fun things too. Yeah, we lots of nice fun things. Yeah. Anyway, what's new? We talk about what's new in China specifically, well, with regards to China. Because it's what's in China. New? What's new? It's not what's it's old. It's not what I was about to say. We don't <laughs> talk about what's old. Well, once in a while we will. Yeah. We'll do a yeah. throwback. This is kind of not that old, but I'd say a couple months ago. Okay. Um, Forgot to do it. No, we put this out there. Oh, we forgot to follow up. Though. Yeah, well, yeah. there is a follow up. You know, dictator Xi, he went and posed with some sugar cane, right? Mm -hmm. So, of course, this created this cult of personality frenzy where people were coming from around the country to take pictures with that sugar cane, that specific like that cane. sugar cane plant. <laughs> okay. Um, it's a it's a resurgence of Mao era policies, which is yeah. like you go and promote a specific crop because it shows the output of the country. It's very old school ideology, like the Soviet Union did it. Yeah, it posed with like you know the, with a, the dictator at the time or whatever, and then throngs of people go pose in front of the wheat. Right. Yes. China did that with Mao. We saw it die. We never saw that happen again. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, now we're seeing a resurgence of that. Let's pose in front of the crops. It's usually a, a warning sign that there <laughs> yeah, aren't this, enough crops. Yeah, it's not um, good. There used to be this website. It was like Kim Jong Un holds stuff. I think it was called, and it oh. basically had him like holding corn mm. and holding a whatever a potato. He does or, hold things. Yeah, and it's like just a, had him, you know, you know the old one, Kim Jong Il. Sorry, it's a one, it's a no. both a fascist and a communist thing. Yeah, is having really is. the dictator like standing and posing or holding something yeah. and looking at something, observing. Yeah. I, I I just have to say that I I I can't stand to see this what we're looking at behind us here where people are willing to first of all they were paying money as mm. well pay, to pay money and to queue up to take a picture with a freaking piece of bamboo sugarcane well, yeah, looking just, junk yeah. you know just because some random dude stood next to it yeah isn't it horrible it is literally just the old days, though, yeah. isn't it? Just with now we have cell phones and well, social media. There's there's a little bit of positive news that came out of this, though. What? <laughs> sort of. Is somebody else obviously thought it was? Whoa, really whoa, 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 <laughs> yeah, whoa! Can you, whoa, can you turn that wow, volume down a little bit? That was obscene. <laughs> what did you say? Wow, so good. <laughs> that, that black <laughs> screen was so yeah, good. Yeah, let me just make sure that uh, yeah we've got the right <laughs> audio here. Okay, all right. Okay, all right. now Sorry yeah that. we'll play it again. Uh, somebody set fire to that uh, little uh, sugar cane. Yeah, I'm actually, I have an alternative thing. I think this happened by accident because in China, so many people smoke. You know, there is a potential that somebody just chucked a cigarette, but, or, you know. Like... It's entirely possible. But anyway, look, I'm, I don't like to see things burning down. No, no. I don't like to see anything like that. But one thing I'm glad is that, that, that this pathetic thing of lining up to take a photo with that thing's now over. Yeah, that's, it's that's burned. why I'm congratulating. It's burned. It's finally, it's done. Because yes. you got to stop worshiping crops. They've got. We've shown it in the show before, but there's like places around China where Xi Jinping looked at a toilet, and the toilet's now got like banners around it. Yeah, and, and like gold, like velvet robes and whatever you want to call it, ropes and things. It's horrible. Like why? Why is there so much worship over this one man? And okay, if he wrote a poem or something, I get it. But like, yeah, you hang literally, it up a poem or he stood in this spot and they've got it like all, you know, cordoned off and it's a famous spot now. He touched mm. this, he touched this microphone. Remember, they have a museum where like everything, this, this teacup he touched, you mm -hmm. know, it's just, yeah, it's a bit much. You see that with all the dictator stuff. Like, it's like a historical thing. Mm -hmm. once, once you get to that level of power, you can kind of just have people worshiping everything you touch you literally yeah. touch yeah which is pathetic i get it if someone's dead like yeah okay maybe napoleon you find napoleon's teacup and it's got some kind of historical significance yeah, like worshiping it though. no but you're not but the thing is xi jinping's alive yeah he's walking true. around eating pork all over the place and people are like this you know this yeah. bone that he chewed on it's like right. you know. remember the anyway. footprints Yes. Outline, there's outlines yes outlines of his footprints yeah he stood here exactly and you pay money to go stand yeah there. it's yeah. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> I mean, maybe I just maybe I'm missing. Something. Yeah. Um. This 
This uh, footage recently uh, came came to be, and uh, well, it's just normal. If you've been in uh, like a, I guess not not Shanghai in mm, China. If you've yeah. been in the outer, it's kind of normal to see this kind of. Uh, scenes with trash lying around. Now, the reason we show this to you is it's to balance out mm. the propaganda that you see in coming out of China. Because if you were to look at what you see coming out of China, you would think everything's just a shiny neon lights. You and it know? gets cleaner than Japan, right? Yeah, you would think it's clean. But in reality, there's lots of this in China too. Yeah. So you've got to balance it out. It's, it's, it's actually very honestly somewhere in between. Yeah. In the big fancy cities, you get clean areas. Yeah. You also get filthy areas. It's like that everywhere in the world, right? Yeah. You go to LA, you'll have like exactly the same glitzy areas, yeah. and then you've got like horrible homeless encampments. Yeah. It's just the way it is, right? Yeah. But we just have to show you the reality of China that it's not just the glitzy stuff. Yeah. Um, anyway, move on to something a little more fun. So um, <laughs> we all know about China and its Are AI. Are we calling this fun? It's super fun, dude. Okay, let's call. You it know fun. this old. Uh, so what did what did the what did the Chinese government put out here? Well, Xinhua, you know, which is huge news agency, news agency, it's the state news agency, yeah. and it put out this thing. Propaganda, it says, yeah. um, it's the uh, Kemusan Dance Challenge, AI Panda versus Real Panda. Okay. Now, um, oh, who do you think's gonna win? Because it's a challenge, right? It's a challenge. It says I'm reading challenge. this as a challenge, and there must be some sort of vote process. But I just realized this is Chinese propaganda. There will be no vote. There'll be <laughs> there no will outcome. be no selection. You know that's yeah. funny. Mm -hmm. That actually is real. If you think about how many like ad campaigns or social media campaigns and all this stuff in America are based on like your choice. Even we do it. Yeah. On Bon Ho on our on our Monday show. Everything's about voting. You vote mm. for this. What's your favorite? This. You choose the next topic. You don't see that in China, do you? So they no. say a challenge, but there's no outlet to, to pick your favorite. No, no. <laughs> it's no. just you got to do that in your head. Exactly. So let's let's see who I wins. I think I think the real panda will win because it's real. I don't even know what the competition. Maybe. Is. Well, let's let's. We're just gonna have to watch it and see. Let's take a look. Okay. <laughs> I, yeah. What even is this? Did you, you didn't cut this. No, I put in the music because it was copywritten oh. music. This is the video from Shin. Yes, this is Shin Hwa's what did, video. What are we even watching? <laughs> what is this? Is this someone paid to have this made? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why is this arm disappearing into its body? <laughs> Go back to the yeah, arm. Part. Yeah, it's like okay. Um, I don't know about everyone out there. Whoops, but um, I I certainly wouldn't call this a, a, what a success of AI, would you? No, I mean, but they're trying to brag about AI five G expertise here. Right? Yeah, that's right. So again, I think this is a very loose uh, definition of AI. Yeah, what do you, is that even AI? I mean, it, it could be generative art. I think it's just generative art. I yeah. don't think there's any intelligence involved in no. this, artificial or not. No, <laughs> you know what I mean. Pandas are dumb as hell, anyway. Yeah, right? exactly. So. Uh, our audience, who do you think won? Oh, you know what? Let's actually introduce democracy. And yes, this. let's put up who a won? poll. Real who won? Panda or go oh, back and play it again. Oh, the uh, it AI. It's so hard to call that AI. This the, the rubbish or, or fake. I'll <laughs> call just it a fake. computer generated is better, CG. right? CG. Yeah, CG I, Panda. Yeah, CG Panda. Yeah, it's more of a CG Panda than an AI one. We'll play it again for you. We'll stay in in for this this time. Polling. Okay, you guys can vote in the chat now. Yeah, yeah. This is this is a real competition. See, yep. Chinese propaganda team, we we helped you. Yes. We made this a real challenge, and then you'll see who wins. Yes. And then you can maybe pick that going forward. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh boy. Because they, I think they want the CGI panda to win. I think yeah. the Chinese government wants that. Yeah. I mean, why would they do this? They made it. Yeah. It's kind of gross. It's very it's weird. It's kind of gross. I don't want to see a panda swaying its hips around. It's you know? a little sexy. It's a little weird. <laughs> it's a little it's freaking a little weird. Sexy. It's a bit uncanny. Yeah. A little. Great way to start a Friday. It's kind of hot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, if you had that much fur on you, you know. Yeah, anyway. I mean... So do we have a vote? <laughs> hey, we're working on it. Okay. Yeah, the All votes right. are pouring in. See, this is how you do democracy, China. Yeah, we're teaching yeah. you with your own propaganda. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, real panda or CG panda? We will see who wins. Okay. Uh, we'll we'll bring it up to a thousand votes because the votes are just ripping. Okay. All right. It's anonymous, by the way. Yeah. Oh, and if it's if you're on Android, sometimes it doesn't show. So if you're on Android, click one for a real, the first one, and number two for CG panda. Excellent. All right. So now we've got this this jam packed show. Okay. Before we continue, we have to give you. Uh, oh, hold on. Pause it there. What? Look at the arm. <laughs> it's gone. Yeah, I mean, I think that's what happens when you have a, a filter oh. over something. So look, it's either one of those tracking filters or... I, I don't think so. I think yeah. the motion might be from a tracking filter, but yeah. yeah, look at the outside. It's definitely that generative art. Yeah, that art. generative art thing. Yeah, you're, you're probably right. I'm going to pull it now. It's a okay. thousand votes already. With 70 71% of people voted for Real Panda as the winner. Congratulations to Real Panda. And I also choose Real I agree, Panda. because that is the, the worst sorry excuse for an <laughs> AI panda I've ever seen. And remember, guys, when China's trying to threaten the world with its cutting-edge AI, this is what they're talking about. So please, don't worry. <laughs> uh, CG Panda only got 28%. But yeah. I'm, I'm glad we actually put it up to the audience. Absolutely. The people have chosen. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we've got a hilarious segment coming up for you. But first... First, a word from our sponsor for today's show, one of them. Today is a Factor. Today's video is brought to you by Factor. Factor's ready-to-eat meal delivery takes the stress out of meal planning and sets you up for success in the new year. Skip the grocery stores, prep work, and cooking fatigue. Instead, get chef-crafted, dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door with over 35 meals to choose from per week, including options like keto, calorie smart, vegan, and veggie, plus more. Over 55 uh, weekly add-ons. You'll have a ton of nutritious and flavorful options to kickstart your resolutions. What do you think about Factor? Having... Well, actually eaten it many times i i can recommend it okay it's something i wasn't aware of before we got the sponsorship and they shipped it to my door and uh i was like okay this is probably just going to be you Whatever. know rubbish yeah but then i actually pulled it out and it's never frozen uh i showed it to my wife we tried it out i was very impressed it tastes great like i said it's very fresh everything's right there and you have the option to either microwave it in two minutes or you can actually just cook it properly in an oven which is just two minutes i prefer to do yeah you know so cook it in the oven and uh, go ahead and enjoy a nice meal and the choice was great yeah uh one one thing that you can do with this is if you want to change up your meal you can you can actually like change it up week yeah. by week yeah it's kind of awesome yeah. yeah actually i'll i'll and I'll... you can put them on hold right yes yes you can uh, stress less over meal times in the new year. Factors no prep, no mess meals, free up time otherwise spent shopping, cooking, and cleanup. No more wasting time in the kitchen. Uh, when things get hectic, Factor is flexible. Change your order up. Uh, change your order up every week with plans from four to eighteen meals per week, or pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime, which I think is awesome. You're not you're not like locked into something. No, you know what I, mean? I don't like that feeling. But what I what I will say is this is something that you're going to want to keep eating mm -hmm. because it's super super delicious. Mm -hmm. It's not the kind of stuff you're walking down your frozen food aisle. This is yeah. like straight up good high quality ingredients, chef prepared stuff. Yeah, I think that's something that you have to bear in mind. Is a lot of these food plans that you hear about it's all about being health yeah, conscious yeah. they have all the health conscious yeah. options yeah. but they also have just normal good tasting food yes, too. yes you know what yes. i mean so you don't feel like you're like yeah like you're not you don't have to get oh, some man, what a struggle, yeah, you know? yeah you can actually just choose the stuff you want for and sure the portions are great and it's yes. it's it's good head to factormeals.com slash adv50 and use the code adv50 to get 50 percent off that's code adv 50 a five zero at factormeals.com slash adv50 to get 50 percent off thank you very much to factor yeah it's actually really good yeah so um the new year we've got an old friend a couple of old friends uh joining us here. yes we've got rick as we all know we all remember rick right wow that's a little too much for me we're a little worried because we hadn't seen him in a while yeah but don't worry he's back let's explain if you are new here mm -hmm. you will have no idea what we're talking about <laughs> sure. uh, there are people that have they're the foreigners basically non-chinese people that take up these positions whether they're interns or paid employees for state media outlets in mm -hmm. china and the chinese government loves to use them to push propaganda yeah so they go out there and they work for the state media like these guys and that's all they do is they're like the foreign voice for chinese state propaganda, propaganda yeah. apparatus right yeah um yeah, it's spokespeople would say. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, kind um, of like. You yeah. want to hear about Salesman. poverty alleviation? <laughs> you know these fascinating topics you always hear about coming out of China. You know, high-speed rail. 
Yeah, something like that. They have these guys go out there and make English uh, programs about them. Now, one of our favorites is Rick, the guy in the middle. He yeah. has been on lots of uh, you know stories that we've shown, and yeah. he just always says the best quotes. He's very quotable. Yeah. Wow, so good. Oh, oh. interesting. That, yes. You're kind of telling a yes, story yes. here with that one. Uh, but then we have the guy that I'm covering here. Here he's uh, already here, CCP President Milk. Xi Jinping. And okay. that is because... Uh, many pointed out that he looks like a British version of me. Yes. And so there was this lore and this ridiculous fake story that came about that he was created and replicated to replace me. So yes. that everything I say, like if I'm critical of China's human rights record, he can be the opposite yeah. <laughs> because he's like yeah. created by the CCP as an alternate reality me. Yeah. So see, he became CCP milk. His shadow milk. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> it's like yeah. shadow heart. Yeah, know? exactly. Anyway, yeah. I made a joke, a parody video about it. Mm -hmm. It's very funny. And uh, in the video, funnier than the whole fake me thing, because yeah. that's obviously a joke, uh, was him being very upset at his Chinese co-host that she was getting most of the airtime. Dude, he this guy, <laughs> you can tell he's he's like a prima donna. He he's just wants the spotlight. Yeah. It's it's got to be about him and he gets so pissed off when other people talk. So that's what makes this particular clip hilarious. Yeah, so that's enough setup. I just yeah. wanted to tell you that the funny thing wasn't in the beginning it turned out like I just wanted to make fun of the fact that he looks we look like each other. Yeah. But it turned into me just dying laughing at all of the videos together with this woman and he's just like I think one of the quotes was like i probably get it wrong but it's something like um i've noticed that you're getting all of the talking time and he said like <laughs> that on the broadcast yes, <laughs> not yeah. like behind the scenes because he kept trying to like say something she <laughs> kept cutting him off <laughs> anyway so let's yeah. show you this fantastic this is fascinating okay because of course um dictator she had a speech for new year like a new year speech for china yes. like here 2024 what yeah. we're going to do so of course xinhua they release a video of these foreigners discussing how great the speech was. So we thought we'd show it to you. Let's get us out of here and we're going to play this. Shall we just play it through? Someone says she, she milks jacket yeah. is too small and Rick's is too big. Yeah, it's true. They should have swapped. I think he's fitting. The new year is yeah. already here. President Xi Jinping gives his new year speech to usher in 2024. And this is just going to go straight It offers a great propaganda. perspective to review yes. the past year. And also we can see where China is heading for the new year from his remarks. Oops. President Xi summarized 2023 as a year when the country has marched forward with solid and robust steps, <laughs> in high spirits and with great confidence. <laughs> From President Xi's speech, we can pick some of the highlights of China's 2023. Hmm, where should we start? I bloody hate this man. You know, I think we can all relate to places that we've traveled in China over the past year. Well, we do have a blackboard. Why don't we mm -hmm. each write down a word for mm -hmm. 2023? Mm -hmm. Rick, how about... Uh, what's, we... what's going on? <laughs> what's going on with his voice? I think for some reason, I, I couldn't figure it out because we've watched other videos of this yeah. guy, right? But I don't understand why he's trying. I think he's trying to sound like extra proper or something. Yeah, because he didn't do this in the videos I saw before. Well, you know what well, I mean? That parody video? Well, we have a blackboard. I think we should try to do this. Yeah, he's like closed his lips like yeah. this. <laughs> Obviously, the whispering part is what, as these are our editions. Yeah. We're making a parody. Are you sure? You know, you'll, we'll leave it up to the audience. But yeah. anyway, I did want to point out the real voice part. It's really weird. He's going like... I just want to talk like this. He like mm -hmm. won't open his mouth for some reason. Now, the thing about this video, and you've probably picked it up already, but he is constantly staring at Rick the That's entire the yeah. time. Like if you watch the video, he does not <laughs> avert his gaze from Rick. He's got this hateful stare. It's just, we're just going to have to play it out, okay? All right, let's yeah. play it out. We won't stop it again, okay? We'll play it out. Let's go. He's I think we can all relate to places that we've traveled in China over the past year. Well, we do have a blackboard. Why don't we mm. each write down a word for mm. 2023? Mm. Rick, how about you go first? Great. <laughs> well, my word is vitality. I guess you're referring to the Chinese economy of and the country's you are. economic development. <laughs> well, it really sums up my feelings after traveling around the country. I hate you, Rick. On the holidays, there were tons of people everywhere. It was mm. almost impossible to book air or train tickets mm. because they were almost all sold out. For me, it's cooperation. I was led to cover the third Belt and Road Forum for International Cooperation and was deeply impressed by President Xi's keynote speech. It's innovation, which is one of the key hallmarks of China's new development philosophy. <laughs> I detest you.
I know. It's really hard to keep up with the recent advancements in technology. There are remarkable achievements in China's space exploration, for example. I should be in the middle. <laughs> Unity. In 2023, two major sports events were held in China. Hmm. I was there to cover both. Why does he get all the questions? The Hangzhou Asian Games and the Chengdu University Aid. <laughs> Seems like you've been talking most of the bloody time. Beautiful. Tell us more. The countryside. I recently traveled to a village-like community in Fujian province. Right, that's enough. You've been talking too bloody much. My turn. Life is beautiful. <laughs> go back, go back. Okay, I'll go back. I want to go back to the first economy one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that chalk was brutal. It's pretty brutal. And they should invest in better chalk. They should. The economy one, which one? Oh, the vitality. No, right in the beginning. Yeah, he's talking one. about vitality. Yeah, right? this is, I love how on the nose this is. Yeah. Like they're trying to be all feel good, right? Well, my word is vitality. Okay, now what comes to your mind when you think of vitality? I think of health. Health, and... live, long life, yes. like uh, being like active, right? Yeah. yeah, 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 that's vitality, right? Getting out there doing stuff. Yeah, yeah. and I mean, at, uh, an old man at Rick's age, it's probably the top of your, yeah. you know, priorities. He seems pretty vital. Yeah. Like he's rollerblading around yeah, and stuff. Yeah, he's doing his thing. Um, but yeah, immediately it's... I guess you're referring to the Chinese economy and the country's <laughs> overall economic development. I, I mean, that's just... Remember what we said mm -hmm. is that they get a huge budget for propaganda, then yeah. they push it to the last minute so all their propaganda sucks. Yes. And then they waste it all on whatever corruption or keep it mm -hmm. or do whatever, you know, whatever the production team's doing. Yeah. And then they have to jam in all the stuff they were supposed to pepper in throughout the year. Yeah. They have to do every little thing. High-speed rail, <laughs> economic development. Yeah. Uh, there's no genocide in Xinjiang. Every little thing, it's, they got to go. <laughs> and they did in this video. Yeah. We cut most of it out. It's super boring. Um, but one thing that's constant throughout this entire video is just how much he stares at Rick with those dagger eyes. He's so mad. He hates Rick. I don't understand. He hates everyone he presents with. This yeah, it's is what like, I've noticed. Yeah, he, yeah, he wants to be solo. He wants to be the, the He's beyond solo. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, he's really frozen like... carbonite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I mean... Incredible. Oh, by the way, they use Comic MS Sans? Is they that did. Comic MS Sans? I'm pretty sure they did with the, with the big titles. Let's take a look. My feelings after traveling around the country. I hate you, Rick. <laughs> On the holidays, there were tons of people everywhere. It was almost impossible to book air or train tickets because they were almost all sold out. Hold on, that's that's my favorite right there. Mm -hmm. That's there has been so much talk about how China's domestic travel tanked and the international travel tanked because people post COVID they thought there's going to be a resurgence and everyone's mm -hmm. going to pour into the country and they want to see China because of the lockdowns are so long. Yeah. But there's so much demand for it and it, there was no demand that was met. Right, the man, demand was, was met easily. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like it was the the amount of people that wanted to actually use that money to travel around it was bad. Right, like it was it wasn't meeting the goals that they had expected. Yeah. So he has to say in his life. Oh, you did you notice there were so many tickets sold it was hard to get one. <laughs> during that whole time when, you know, the economic reports were coming yeah. out about China's downturn, all the shills were going to like very heavily like populated tourist hotspots to see see China's economy yeah. is totally fine. Yeah. Um, see, actually, there's lots of people in the road. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what I cut out before that was Rick saying about how he traveled to Xinjiang and how vibrant the tourist industry is in Xinjiang before he spoke. So they had to throw in the Xinjiang genocide denial as well. Mm. It's all part of it. But yeah, let's see if it is Comic Sans. Yeah, that, that looks, looks like that looks, Comic Sans. Looks like Comic Sans, yeah. Which is For me, it's cooperation. Yes. Anyway. This, this guy doesn't know how to say Why cooperation. Say cooperation? I don't know. Yep. Anyway. I was there to cover the third Belt and Road Forum for International Cooperation and was deeply impressed by President Xi's keynote speech. I'm sure you were. Of course anyway. he was. Yeah, I know. It's I know, I know. Um, one last thing. Sure. I love this. This is great. Oh, I detest you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Petition for sound bites, by yes. the way. Either that or or yeah. the life is beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I kind of like the... It's yeah, really hard good. to keep but up with... Turn to the camera. Can you play that one yeah, more yeah, time? Yeah, like well, he comes out of the carbonite freeze. Yes, he does. And he looks at the camera and it's scary. Yeah. The Let's just get, we'll get there. We'll in technology, okay. there are remarkable achievements in China's space exploration, for example. I should be in the middle. <laughs> you did a great job with this voice. <laughs> Unity. Yeah. In 2023, two major sports events were held in China. Mm. I was there to cover both. 
Look at the way he's looking at Rick. Tell me that's not hate. That's Pure <laughs> hatred, dude. It's like if I go like this the whole time. Yeah, I know. Make us big. Yeah. Okay. All right. Fine. Yeah, that's that's very... That's what very, if I did this the whole time? That's what he's doing because, look, Rick turns to the camera. He looks at the other person, but he's only staring at Rick. Oh, stop. It's too weird. It's too weird. But that's what's going on here. It's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. It lined up with my face. <laughs> Why does he get all the questions? <laughs> the Hangzhou Asian Games. This guy's so awkward, isn't he? He's, He's such an <laughs> awkward individual. I love this. Though. This is what China, yeah. the Chinese government. This is their best sword. This is, is yeah, the, yeah. This, this is, is so amazing. Yeah, this is We're the sword of inspiration. It really is. And they just, you know what's sad is they just can't do anything for fun. They can't make fun of this. They can't parody no. it. They can't make jokes. It's always dead ass serious. I know that it's like, oh, this <laughs> Xi Jinping's speech is so amazing. What a man, you know. He wants his precious squeaky <laughs> chalk. <laughs> <laughs> New university aid. Seems like you've been talking most of the bloody time. <laughs> make me big there. Yeah, you gotta beautiful. make me big right there, Tell dude. Tell us more. Like the here. countryside. No, the big face of him. I recently oh, traveled that. to a village-like community in Fujian province. Right. See if I line up. Okay, let's try. Oh, I'm yeah. too... It's okay. I'll, I'll, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, That's it's not, not gonna it's work. Not gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> You That's enough you've been that. talking. Yeah. You don't say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Open your eyes so I may spit in it. <laughs> it is bloody m- <laughs> What the hell? Oh, wow, so good. <laughs> His little ear was the focus. Yeah, yeah it that was That's my turn. Yeah, exactly. Life, <laughs> there he is. <laughs> it's beautiful. That yeah. was the, oh my goodness. Yeah, it was a yeah. good find, dude. I commend yeah. you on that one. Yeah. The voice was. Yeah, that's you know, the thing. Fr- China French keeps putting this is. stuff out. We'll never run out of it. It's just no. hilarious. No, we can, in fact, we can only cover this. So yeah. We have, still have a show. So uh, before we get on to our main topic for today, guys, we have to give you another word from our other sponsor today. Life which is beautiful. Which, of course, life is beautiful if you drink AG1. Yes, life is beautiful if you drink AG1. That's a great segue. Yeah. And we love AG1 as yeah. well. Taking care of your health isn't always easy, but it should at least be simple. That's why for the last couple of years now, uh, we've been drinking AG1 every day, no exceptions. Mm-hmm. Just one scoop, mix in water, once a day, every day, and it makes me feel energized. Uh, very, very happy that I'm getting all of my nutrition in one place, mm-hmm. that I don't have to worry about, you know, c- you know, counting my macronutrients throughout the day and taking handfuls of vitamins, yeah. especially been useful for you as well. Absolutely, because I got a terrible diet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At least you're honest Yeah, about and it. this at least makes me feel better about myself yes. a little bit. That's because each <laughs> serving of AG1 delivers yeah. my daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre and pro uh, biotics and more. It's a mm-hmm. simple, healthy habit. And it's also powerfully simple. Um, you know, it's fantastic. Again, AG1, every scoop takes under a minute to mix up, right? Mm-hmm. I'd say it takes under 30 seconds to mix up. Absolutely. You drink that. Not only does it taste good, you you have the peace of mind that you're doing everything you can for mm-hmm. your body yep. for that day. And it's really peace of mind. It's not just peace of mind. It's just, I feel better too. Absolutely. It's made uh, me feel a lot better. Since recent, started, yeah. yeah. Recently, we've been exercising quite a bit more. And I, I will say that AG1 definitely has benefited that as well. I've mm-hmm. noticed that my stamina has increased. I don't get winded as much. Obviously, I'm getting just better. You know, both of us are getting better as we exercise. Yeah. But it's definitely a potent part of that for sure. Yeah. Definitely. Um, you can't it, go wrong. I mean, no. a- athletes take it. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know? If there's one product I had to recommend to elevate your health, it's AG1. And that's why we have partnered mm. with them for so long. If you want to take ownership of your health, start with AG1. Take AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 and K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash ADV. That's drinkag1.com slash ADV. Check it out. And that's a new URL, by the way. If you're used to the old one, this is our new URL. Check it out, guys. Now back to the show. In fact, it's time for our main segment, which of course is Soft Power Hour. This is where we talk about how China tries to change your mind through, you know, the internet and through propaganda and all that sort of thing. Say despicable. Despicable. Yeah, despicable ways. You always say that. Do I? No, you say dastardly. I don't say dastardly. I say despicable. You say despicable? Yes, I do. Oh, okay. So it's what you're saying. You say dastardly. What you're saying is you like minions. No, I don't. That's you. (laughs) No, that is is 
propaganda. Yeah, well, you know, like I've, I found the Minions music or whatever where they have like Harry Potter Minions or something. And I played it and you were singing it the whole day. If you are an old fan, you'll know <laughs> there is a deep hatred of Minions. And there is the an show. Imagine Dragons Minion song too. <laughs> There was a joke that I hate both minions. Yeah. I hate minions in pop culture. Yeah. So like t-shirts of them and stuff. And then I hate, I don't hate, but I dislike Imagine Dragons. Yeah. And you managed to find mm -hmm. minions singing Imagine Dragons. There is such a thing on Spotify. <laughs> there is such Can a thing. Can you tell me why? <laughs> I guess they're just popular. I would like to change this show to combat things like this. Yes, yes, we can. <laughs> to me, that is a greater threat. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> so uh, we're talking about the Chinese military. Now, there's been a huge shakeup in China. Xi Jinping has been purging a lot of the yeah. military commanders. Yes. And, um, you know, like the rocket chief and all that. They've just been disappeared, demoted, completely taken out of the system. And for the longest time people couldn't really understand why but a report has just come out well actually yeah before we get to that i mm -hmm. want to read uh this this article it's actually linked in the description all of our articles are linked mm -hmm. in the description where we got all our information from cool and um uh, before we get into what they found uh there's there's been a bit of a debate about that so we're going to talk about yeah. that but what's not up for debate and this is a quote is that there's been a major upheaval within the plarf the plarf <laughs> Plarf. We love these yes. sounds. What's the? We had the plan. <laughs> yeah, the plan, the plaf. The plaf and the plarf. And now we've got the plarf, yeah. Which is the uh, rocket force, obviously. Yes, rocket force. And other <laughs> entities linked to it, as well as China's defense establishment at large in the last year or so. In June 2023, Li Yuchao, the then head of the plarf, as well as the force's top commissioner and two of Li's deputies, were all dismissed reportedly over corruption. Mm -hmm. In July, so it's just like, yep. like right in, in succession, right? Yep. Wu Guohua, a uh, former senior PLARF officer and head of the PLI's third department intelligence directorate, died under myster mysterious circumstances. Yeah, because that just happens. And then, <laughs> yeah. in September 2023, China's defense minister, Li Shangfu, disappeared from public view officially due to unspecified illness. Mm -hmm. In the following month, Chinese authorities formally announced that Li, who was reportedly under investigation for corruption, had been sacked. He'd only been at the post for seven months after taking over for Wei Fenghe in March last year. Wei, another former PLARF commander, does not appear to have been publicly heard from since then as well. Mm. Do you understand what a big shakeup is unprecedented? We've yeah. never seen anything like this in the, in the Chinese military situation. Yes. Uh, the amount of purges that have been going on due to corruption have been insane. Mm. They might actually be for corruption. Yeah. They might be because they said the wrong things or they got cozy to the wrong people. There might be internal strife that we just don't know. Absolutely. What we do know is that there is a report uh, from Bloomberg. Yeah, apparently the uh, U.S. intelligence knew a thing or two. Apparently. Now, this is where it comes into contention. Uh, yes. But what seems to have happened... You've seen this. You can just yeah. play this. Um, it's a rocket. Look, apparently, guys, it goes up in the sky. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just... just some, you you some know what? Chinese state media. China's really good at bottle rockets, though, these days. You know those ones you fill with water and pump up? And then they oh, shoot up? Oh, yeah. It's kind of similar to what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Because apparently... Apparently. Uh, they found some vast fields of missile silos mm -hmm. uh, in Xinjiang, I believe. Yeah, Western China. You know where the genocide is happening. Yeah, and apparently the rockets were discovered to be filled with water. Instead well, the of si fuel. the silo lids mm -hmm. were found to not be able to open properly. Yes. So in the event that a rocket needed to be fired, the lids would not fully open. I think that's not and up for speculation. The water yeah, part real. is, but the lid part. Yeah, the is lid's big real. Deal. So if you try to launch it, it would it, it wouldn't be able to launch. There'd yes. be problems, which is a huge issue. That means that all of those massive amounts of missile silos mm -hmm. out there were ineffective. Yeah. You yeah. know. So if you had to fire your ICBMs or whatever out of there, good luck. They wouldn't be able to fire. So imagine you've got this, oh, we've got missiles incoming from, you know, the US or from Russia or wherever. We need to retaliate. Or more likely scenario, hey, let's fire on another country. Uh, and Taiwan. you try. <laughs> yes, let's fire on a Taiwan. Um, then it wouldn't work. Yes. So You know, it mm -hmm. reminds me of something to do with water, some sort of state official very oh, you mean this? <laughs> water cooler to Bumsy. A lot of water yeah. going so, on. So um, the rumors were, or the so-called intelligence is that you've got all these silos that the lids don't open and you also have rockets filled with water. Yeah, so here's the contention. Yeah. The contention, and, oh, and again, man. we have... Um, Sorry, give me a second. It's okay. The contention... We'll go way back. There. I go... I'm all over the You're place here, crazy, guys. crazy, dude. I just wanted to 
get back to go. this. Here okay. we go. The yeah. contention is mm -hmm. that uh, some military experts say, why would you even put water in rockets? Because th when they're stored, they're stored empty. Yeah. You're not going to corrode them on purpose. Right? No, you're not going to have them filled with uh, rocket fuel. If there was some problem with fuel or let's say there's graft involved, there wouldn't need to be water in the equation, is what some people are saying. Right. Some people are also saying that a byproduct of these rockets is water, right? Maybe in the combustion element or something. Sure. <laughs> um, all of that is in the in the report that has both kind of perspectives. Mm -hmm. But the lid thing is not really up for contention. It looks yeah. like there's been some problems with that. And then also the other side of the thing that that kind of um, uh, supports the water in the rocket argument is this, and I'll read this. Okay. <clears throat> the U.S. assessment cited several examples of the impact of graft, including missiles filled with water instead of fuel, in vast fields of missile silos in Western China with lids that didn't function in a way that would allow the missiles to launch effectively. On a broader level, the watering down or even fully replacing fuel with water is a common form of military corruption around the world. So this isn't, this is from Dr. Jeffrey Lewis. Yeah. This is not a, a unheard of thing. Like I think a lot of people that are contesting this or at least taking that side of things is saying like, why would you do that? It doesn't make logical sense, but this happens. This yeah. is not like an isolated incident. Yeah. Uh, the sheer money involved with rocket fuel on the black market is enough to you know tempt anyone that is susceptible to corruption, right? Absolutely, because you're getting it for free. Mm. If you're a commander or whatever, you're getting it, your allotment sent to you. And then you can say like, oh, we filled up these rockets or whatever, we need more fuel. Yeah. Meanwhile, what you're doing is actually just filling them with water or filling the... Um, refueling tanks with water or diluting it and selling the real stuff off on the black market and making yeah. a lot of money. Yeah. yeah. Some people are saying that, oh, they saw that uh, Russian state media picked this story up. So that kind they of... They would know because if you look <laughs> in the history of Soviet Union, it's common. Yes. You know, there was a certain type of bomber that used to fly that needed uh, uh, alcohol for its cooling system inside for the pilots or whatever. It actually I'm had an alcohol a straw. Oh well, no! What they would do is those <laughs> those pilots on there. They would they would literally just sweat it out or whatever, siphon all the alcohol out, and then sell it on the black mm. market. There's a huge thing about it. You can read up on it. It's hilarious. Yeah. yeah. So there's some these. Uh, this is on war mm -hmm. something. Anyway, this is report uh, the war mm -hmm. zone. I mm -hmm. guess it's called. Um, this is a uh, an example of the range of some of these missiles and so you got to get some perspective these missiles will be used in a scenario with taiwan most sure. likely right so mm -hmm. if you look at that map real quick okay i'll bring it back i don't know why you skipped it that's okay mm -hmm. um you can see wh where these missiles would actually go this is all being developed for a specific purpose well of course see. like the, the thing is this whole military readiness and missiles and all that that's kind of common for any big superpower, sure. you need to yeah. have that deterrent and you need to have that threatening, you know, that big stick yeah. to walk around with. But of course, this is a huge shakeup. And look, some some people are pointing fingers and laughing at China and saying, look, they're yeah. so corrupt that they filled their missiles up with water and stuff. You know, yeah. what do we have to worry about? But on the other hand, it's no laughing matter because that means that they're actually strengthening themselves now. They're actually doing a shakeup because... Corruption in the Chinese government, it's endemic. It's everywhere. Yeah. You cannot get away from corruption and in the military either. Corruption is just part of how the system works. Yeah. Yeah. It's how people are put into power. It's how things are run. If you want to get anything done, you have to bribe or at least curry favor with the right people. You know, guanxi, all of that stuff. We've yeah. lived it. We know what it's Connections like. And so, you know, corruption is there. And when they start rooting the corruption out is when you have to start worrying because that means <laughs> yeah. that they're actually taking things seriously and they want to actually not just have a, a fake facade of a military, they want a real one. Yeah. And so if they get rid of the water out of the missiles and fix the lids on the silos, that means now they're ready to fire. Yeah, I think before we had a dangerous... China, right? Like a dangerous China led by the Chinese government, mm -hmm. and but it was but it was rife with corruption. And it was a paper tiger. And it was a paper tiger. Now I think we're seeing a real tiger being developed. Yes. And rooting out corruption, not not in necessarily within the government at large. No. I'm talking about like within the functional war machine. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, to be more functional, and I think yeah. that is a, that is a concern. Yeah. For sure. So I think for for people that are kind of having a chuckle at the Chinese government for being so corrupt and having water in their missiles, remember this is a bad sign. Yeah, because if they are first of all, you know, this is coming out. They're doing something about it. That means that they're very seriously getting ready for something. I think um, 
I think also there's a lot of lessons to be learned that China is learning right now with Russia. Um, when they faced just enormous equipment failures and, the, and exposed a lot of the corruption while in an active battle yes, situation, definitely. all on like social media, mm. they're able to see all this. And the fact that they have such a close partnership with Russia, they can probably learn a lot of this kind of stuff. And they're like, we need to deal with this stuff before we enter a war scenario. Correct. Definitely right. the whole invasion of Ukraine was definitely a big learning experience for yeah. China and Russia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Uh, but there's, th this is definitely going to be a developing thing for sure. Yeah, we'll keep keep an eye on it and see where it goes. But uh, I, I I just wanted to end by saying I encourage people to look into what what they think actually happened too, and I think that article in the description mm -hmm. is very thorough on both sides. Yeah, um, we do know, you know, just from from living in China, we know that China deals with corruption uh, at an unreal level. Mm. And the fact that they're being so public about all of these purges and yes. about all of this alleged corruption, it's it's a bit worrying, like you said, because they're actually showing some functionality yeah. in their future war preparations as Correct. opposed to before when you sweep it all under the rug. Yeah. Anyway, so, we've got uh, a very big worldview coming up. Yeah. So how about we move directly into Wumao Corner first? Sure. Okay. Uh, Wumao Corner, we talk about the haters and what they're up to. And let's see what uh, we've got in store for you today. You prepared this part, didn't you? Uh, I think so. Oh, yes. Okay. So this is pretty interesting. Yeah. <clears throat> um, if you guys know, uh, if you guys don't have Apple, you'll kn you will know what file sharing is, at least like through Bluetooth. Um, yeah. If you use Bluetooth, you can send a file from one person to another person. Yeah. AirDrop is Apple's version of that. It uses a more complex system to do such a thing. And yet it's very simple. And yet it's very <clears throat> simple. But it's only between Apple devices was yeah. my point. Yeah. Now, what happened was back in the Hong Kong protests in 2019, and then also subsequently the uh, Shanghai uprising. Um, the biggest thing also was, was like the China. whole bridge, bridge, yeah, the bridge banner thing man Beijing. thing. People were using... Uh, What's it called? Uh, Airdrop. Airdrop to send each other uh, digital leaflets, as they were calling them. Because normally, what you'll have in a protest is people will put like, "Join us at this bridge or whatever," you know, like yeah. "Free China" or something like this mm -hmm. around China or Hong Kong yeah. or whatever. People were using Airdrop to send each other this leaflet so that it couldn't be traced. And the reason is that Airdrop is encrypted, right? Mm -hmm. So it's it's when you what you send, nobody can intercept theoretically. And when you do intercept it, you won't know who sent it or who sure. received it. So mm. what happens? Well, here's the thing. Airdrop, as we all know, it's something that's on everyone's iPhone. If you've got an iPhone and mm -hmm. if you've got a MacBook or something, and all you do is you can have any file you want, whether it's an image or a video mm -hmm. or whatever, and you can share it. And when you share it, you choose Airdrop. What it does then is it pings out there and sees anyone that's ready to receive an airdrop. Yeah. Now, you have the choice to have your phone set to be able to receive from everyone or just from your friends. Yeah. If you've set it to just from your friends or your contacts, then you won't, you won't be visible. Yes. But if you've got it set to receive from everyone, which I do believe is default. I could be wrong. I think it's default. I think it is, yeah. Um, people will be able to see you and try to send you something. So you might be sitting on the subway and suddenly a message pops up and says, uh, do you want to accept this? Um, you want to build a snowman. Well, yeah, exactly. Do you want to accept this file? Yeah. Um, of course, you're going to say no. And you normally would say cancel no. But of course, you can say yes if it looks you enticing. Could. You could. Especially since people started to learn that this is a good way to yeah. go undetected. Because listen, here's the thing. Because it's peer-to-peer -peer and it's like... You have to be within 10 feet or whatever to yeah. receive it. or You know, it's something that doesn't go over the internet. Yeah. So the Chinese censors and government cannot see it or track it, yeah. right? That's why the Chinese government was so afraid of this mm -hmm. technology. Because I could pass secret messages to you, for instance, yeah. if we were on the subway. In Beijing. Yeah, yeah. in Beijing, right in the, underneath the nose of the government. I could, on Tiananmen Square, I could send you something via airdrop. You could get be it. like, remember the massacre? Yeah, I could send you anything. Yeah. I could send you a picture, picture I McDonald. just took or, you know, whatever. Yeah. So the Chinese government didn't like this at all because all of a sudden they couldn't control the flow of information anymore because people could go and share. They could get groups together. They could be on the subway. They could be on the buses, you know, passing notes and, and directions on what to do and where to go and how to protest and things like that. So they were like, no, 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 no. So they actually forced Apple to, in, to introduce this feature that you, cannot, you can no longer leave your airdrop to be open for everyone to send you stuff. Yeah. And if you set it to everyone, it's only that way for 10 minutes and then automatically turns off. And that did that for everyone. Yeah. And then, so the then world. they rolled it out from there to everyone. This was definitely just capitulating to China. 
because for years and years and years, your phone would be open to everyone somebody could send. It's up to you whether you want to receive it or not, right? But then Apple was like, well, China's going to kick us out if we don't do something. So then they introduced this whole like 10 minute limit for everyone. So you have to manually enable it. 10 minutes later, it turns off. So that means that people couldn't send things to strangers anymore. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but here's the thing, though. We have to talk about this vulnerability, and we have to be realistic about it here. Um, back in 2019, I think it's a German security uh, company, actually told Apple that there was a vulnerability in their airdrop um, system, okay? Now, how this vulnerability works is, don't worry, guys, you're not going to get hacked all of a sudden, okay? If you accept, like, for instance, if I'm the bad actor, I'm the hacker here, okay? So I'm the Chinese government. I've got my secret police on the train. They create a document that says free Hong Kong dot AVI yeah. or whatever, right? Dot JPEG. And if they try to send it to you and you see it pop up and you're like, you don't know who it is, but it's like free Hong Kong and you accept it. Only if you accept an airdrop request from this hacker, you know, government agent. Right. Then when the phones do that transfer, because of the lackluster security on Apple's side, that hacker will be able to get certain identifying information about you, like your name and your telephone number and your email address. Yeah. Once they've got that information from you, they don't know if you're a dissident or whatever, but think about it. If they're sending a, a, a loaded thing, like say freehongkong.jpg, and you accept that, uh -huh. then they're going to suspect that you're a, a free Hong Kong advocate. Yes. Now they have your information. Yes. Now they can come and arrest you and interrogate you. So the vulnerability is that, um, you know, through an airdrop transfer, if you accept it, you have to accept it, the Chinese government will now be able to get your personal information. They yes. can't actually um, hack in and see what files have transferred or whatever from anyone else. So just so you understand how it works. The thing is, Apple knew about it since 2019. They acknowledged that they received this report from, um, you know, wherever, that uh, the, the German company. But it's... It's a little bit disturbing because it shows that, I don't know, it just shows Apple capitulating to China again, don't you think? Yes. You know, because they really shouldn't allow this to happen. They're putting people's lives at risk. Yes. And they just don't want to stand up to China. And um, it's disappointing, to say the least, to see an American company roll over like that. I think I'm a little bit pissed off because... It's not the first time, like you said. I feel like mm. this is a problem that has not been addressed. And I feel like they do, they do like people whine about it and they do articles mm. about it. And then it kind of just, it's like, oh, nothing happened. The rollout that was clearly in capitulation to the Chinese government, right? <clears throat> yeah. Still maintains, it, it's in place in the software now. Like yeah. it didn't, like, you know, when that whole hubbub came out and they're like, they responded and then now people can't accept files and they did the whole 10 minute thing because of the Chinese government. Everyone's up in arms, right? Everyone's like, this is bull, right? Yeah. I can't believe we're capitulating. Now everyone has to suffer because of this. Now everyone has to deal with this because of their censorship, because of the Chinese government. And then nothing gets reversed. Nothing gets rolled yeah. back, no. right? There's no, the, the pushback stops. Like, and then now we're, we're faced with Apple reality. has done all sorts of crap, like host people's iCloud files in China and stuff. Yeah. Remember, they've yeah. done a lot of bad things to capitulate to the Chinese government. And you know what? Apple's just one of those companies, just like I think Tesla as well, that just seem to be immune from criticism. Yeah. You know, like how many times have people complained about uh, Tesla's not doing the full self-driving or right. whatever that they were promised from 2017 or right. something? People complain, but then it just seems to be swept under the rug and, you know, hey, look, there's a Cybertruck now or whatever, and people just focus on that. Same with Apple. It just seems like maybe because it's such a popular technology company, people are willing to make excuses for their bad behavior. You know what I mean? I think... I don't think people are making excuses. Everyone gets up in arms. They get upset about it. Like I said, nobody says, oh, I've changed my mind. I'm a, I like it now. You know what I mean? People no, just but roll I think over. because they rely on it so much yeah, or yeah, they like true. it so much, they're willing to overlook them doing terrible things that capitulate to the Chinese government. I think you're right. I think that's what it's like. But it's not in support. It's like... Yeah. Oh, it's it's making uh, excuses for. Yeah. 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 I, I, I know it's not in support. But anyway, look, Apple has done a bunch of bad things on behalf of the Chinese government that's absolutely put people's lives at risk. It's not okay. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Especially since they have the complete opposite attitude when it comes to, you know, within the United States, for instance. Yeah. Like when the FBI needed access to a terrorist's phone and they refused to help them unlock it. Right. So they'll do that 
in America, but in China they're willing to compromise. You know, yeah, I mean, it's admirable when you say that in isolation. Yes, but then when you say it on the other side it's, of things, it's the it's same. Like, yeah, it's the same well, what company, the hell, dude. Why can't they have the yeah. same? You know, the same attitude do both. elsewhere. Yeah, <laughs> why do you have to be like that? You know, only in in America. Yes. Anyway, we've gone on about it long enough. Just yeah. wanted to let you know that there is um, a, a hack, and the whole point is that there's a Beijing company that works for the CCP that actually publicly acknowledged that they have this exploit and that they can and the reason they're doing this is they want to scare people away that's from what i was about to airdrop. say that the only reason they would make this public because it seems dumb to, to yeah. put that out there is yeah, because can, they're yeah. worried about airdrop yes and they don't want people to use it if mm. you're a dissident in china right so now they're putting it out there to be like well we're gonna find out who you are and then people won't do it anymore yeah i'll, tell, it I'll tell you this much you can use airdrop still just don't accept Random files from random people. Just in only China, send it. Yeah. yeah, if you're in China, send it between people that you know. You'll still be safe. They can't hack into it. They can just exploit you if you accept their... Yeah, their like drop. a trap. Basically. Yeah, it's a trap. Okay, yeah. anyway, let's yeah. move on from that. Get the idea. Uh, mm. This one, I just brushed over this. There's a whole lot of... Um, you remember when China brokered that whole Saudi and Iran deal? Yeah. Remember that was this big news about how mm. China just caused peace in the Middle East. We saw sure. all of the China propaganda, China propaganda outlets that were pumping this out. We just, mm. you know, Chinese government just brokered peace. It's unheard of. The U.S. used bombs. China used sure. peace and all this sure. kind of stuff. Well, there have been some benefits from their brokerage because there's this uh, very scary group called, I guess, the Houthis or Houthis, and what mm. they what they do is, I guess, they're Iran back. Who this? Who? This? We'll yeah. say, who? This? Yeah, exactly. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. What Bad do, group, though. What they do is yeah. they have stopped. I don't know why I know it's talking about this. This is actually one time I can actually say this. Yeah. Until I read this article, I didn't know about this. Mm. Um, they are blocking off a, sh a very popular shipping route, a route around Africa, right? And they're blocking off all of these container ships that are trying to get through, except what people have found out, according to this article, is that they're allowing... China uh, shipment company Costco, C O S C O. You know, yeah, not one? not Costco, not Costco. Like the, yeah, it's Costco because yeah. of course you know, hey, may as well knock off that name. I think the logo even looks the same, doesn't it? It does. I just yeah. looked at it. Yeah. <laughs> like, anyway, this shipping yeah. company has been allowed to go through while they choke everything off, right? Yeah. This is also being tied to something about oil money and Panama, which was a follow-up here with this article. There's a whole swath of information about mm. it. It's down, uh, I put the link down Links below. Links in the description. But importantly mm. enough, it's interesting to see whenever there's an unsavory state yeah. in someone's conversation, it's always China that's getting a free pass from them. <laughs> yep. Or an unsavory state like the Taliban. Sure. China's rushing over there to make diplomatic ties right off the kick. -go. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> they they have a lot of ties with terrorist organizations. You know. Yeah, it's kind of nuts, right? Mm. Anyway, um, yeah. what have we got next? Chinese PLA linked vessels map the Indian Ocean for submarine I warfare. thought this was just relatively yeah. tied to this. So mm. um, again, this is one of those things that you like to always talk about. This is dual use technology. Yes. And what is dual use technology? It's basically when the Chinese government says... We're doing something for something, but actually it's just for military purposes. You know, you yeah. can say uh, we're developing a, a, a gun to shoot rats because they're rats every but Meanwhile, it's a high-powered rifle that's meant to kill humans. Yes. But you can say it's for one purpose, but you actually use it for another purpose. They Correct. do this with everything. Uh, satellites with, uh, you know, mapping technology, all this. It's always like they say it's meant for a civilian thing, but it's actually dual use. It's supposed to be a military thing. Yeah, so yeah. what they're doing here is mapping the sea, of course, the bottom mm -hmm. of the, the Indian Ocean. The reason is, is that they will need that area for uh, energy supply if yeah. they invade Taiwan. So they're trying right. to map this out. Again, I, I don't like to see... We, we never put a time limit on like when Taiwan's going to get invaded and all this kind of stuff. Of course, it's up to things like uh, you know local politics in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. It's up to, does China feel like they can confidently pull it off? It's up to you know, sure. the whole global order of whatever's happening. But to see that so many steps being taken all the time that is escalating this further yeah. and further is never nice to see. No, it's not nice to see. <laughs> it's not yeah. nice. No. But nobody's looking for some no. reason. I mean, no. obviously, these I articles say, exist for a reason. Yeah. But, yeah. Oh, what What's is this? this? <clears throat> Guys, we have a Monday show. It's called Shaban Ho. It's a VIP show. This is what you missed. It tastes like industrial runoff. This snack is, is just a menace to society. So I'm not looking forward to this. It's kind of like hell. It's hell. It's hell. Like, um, it's not kind of like hell. This is what hell yeah. probably is. You don't want to be eating something that came out of an industrial park in China. Yeah. Oh, it smells like meat. 
It it, <laughs> it does smell like meat. It smells like dog food. Oh, does it? Oh, it really does. These are so preserved. Yeah. You could put this in a mummy's tomb. It tastes a little bit like cigarette ash. It's just rubber. Look at that. It's bendy. Look at it. It's rubber, dude. Woo. That was, uh, that was a spectacular feast. Yeah. Now, uh, one thing that you may not have seen in this, there were a couple of things we actually liked. Yeah, so what we did was we did a tours of different tiers of ga Chinese gas stations. So we yeah. took you into footage that we we took in China of the worst and the best gas stations. So we yeah. went to good ones too. Mm -hmm. This is just a, a good little hype clip. Yeah. And we we tier listed them. And yeah. then we got gas station snacks from each tier. Yeah. And we tiered those as well. Yeah. It was really, really fun. And again, so, there's a bunch of stuff we liked, but it's that's not very sellable, is it? If no. we're like, mm, this is delicious, you're probably not going to be like, I got to see that. Yeah, <laughs> so, exactly. So for those of you who'd like to join us, uh, head on over to patreon.com forward slash ADV podcast to join the Xiaoban Ho tier, if, of course, you have the means. And we'd love to see you there. It's just a little hangout. It's always a different topic. It's something fun that we do on Mondays. And we show you so things that we just can't normally show on YouTube. So, yeah, it's more yeah. fun than... Yeah. And this show is fun but it's more like fun hanging out like we're having a good time yeah good yeah. vibes small little community we'd yeah. love to see you there anyway time to move on now with uh, worldview this is where we talk about everything in the world specifically with regards to china we got quite a big one today so let's get right into it with this china's double whammy what's this headline you've thrown in here uh so china's exports fell for the first time helps in about unscrew seven this cap. years mm -hmm. as domestic demand dips mm -hmm. why well, what happened was we're <clears throat> constantly bombarded over and over again. I think this actually pertains to the first clip we showed, that funny one that we're, we're laughing at, yeah. right? The one with the, the people talking about the New Year's of China's goals, the CCP. Yeah, goal. the vitality. Is yeah. The, yeah. Now, as funny as all that stuff is, it really is uh, emblematic of what China's trying to do. And what they're trying to do is just over and over again, cook the books, lie about it, and pretend like everything's okay. Yeah. Because if they pretend like everything's okay, foreign investment remains pumping into China, the economy gets propped up, everything kind of goes as it always has been. Mm -hmm. But with the more transparency and data that people are figuring out how to actually measure things and the, sure. the power of the internet now, they're kind of seeing behind the facade of the Chinese government's reports on the economy. Yeah, And now we're looking at just the polar opposite of what China keeps saying. Right. The, the real data is that the exports uh, to the U.S. have have plummeted. Right. Mm. And that is not a good thing when you're in almost your entire economy is based on manufacturing right. and exports. Right. Now, the exports to other countries, it doesn't necessarily they didn't necessarily fall. But their our biggest trade partner is China. Right. Yes. So when that takes the, a massive hit, it's a massive hit to the global economy, China's economy um, and China, U.S. relations at large. Yes. Um, it was pretty gloomy data, right? Mm -hmm. um, 2016 was the last time that the trade, you know, the the, the uh, trade plummeted. Let me actually look at. I mean, 2016. Why 2016 was that? Was the last time? Um, there was just a huge global demand prior and post that time, right? For Chinese-made goods. Okay. But you look at it like you look at 2008. You can kind of explain that away. Yeah, there was a financial crisis. People don't have money to go buy their their cheap Android tablet or whatever. Makes sense, right? <laughs> yeah. The next li dip much less bad than that was, was 2016. 2016, yeah, I'll get us out of that. 2022. We're, I mean, we're but looking, 2019 was bad, but that's COVID. That's COVID, right? Yeah. That can be explained away. Yeah. Now we're in an organic economic time where people have money, they have money to spend. And despite all the ads you see for all these services that are selling you cheap Chinese goods, exports to the U.S. are low, and yeah. an all-time low since 2016. So it's pretty nuts to see such bad, uh, good propaganda coming out from China about their growth and cooperation and how much they're actually exporting versus the reality of the situation. Yeah, of course. The rea Look, when, when people have to go out there and say things so yeah. loudly, you, you, they're usually experiencing the opposite. They're trying to hide something. Yes. Right? It's like... You know, somebody who's living day to day and they, they don't have enough money yeah. to spend on anything, but they'll buy a BMW on credit to say, like, look how wealthy I am, you know, type thing, mm -hmm. just to divert attention away. And that's what's going on that's, with China. That's, good. that's you know? a good analogy, yeah. I knew, um, I knew uh, a dude like that. Did you? He, like, <clears throat> basically had to pay off this BMW he bought new, but he was, like, living That's a real with, example. Yeah, he was living with, like, 12 people in a scummy flat in, in a very bad place in South Africa. Just to, like... Just so that he could rich. have that... Yeah. 
BMW, you know? Poor guy. That's like obviously a mental thing, you know? Yeah, he, he was a douche. Oh, okay. It was all about his image, obviously. Yeah. Kind of like China. It's all about their image. I'm saying you have to be in a, <laughs> you kind of have to be in a bad place mentally to care about your image that mon- much. Yeah, <laughs> you know exactly. I mean? Exactly. Anyway. Yeah. Mm. Uh, let's see. What do we got? What do we got? So, we'll share, share imports from China. Have a look. We're on a dip now. Mm-hmm. We're on a dip now. And this is kind of emblematic of the whole cool down. You're, if you go look at Chinese propaganda, and again, I think every time you can go look at it, you can get an idea of what's really happening by saying, and I, I know this is oversimplifying it, but just think of the opposite. Yeah. When you see so much stuff coming out of China about how the economy is you know, totally fine. It's great. Mm. Steady growth, high quality development. When you hear these buzzwords over and, GDP. over and over again, you look into it, you go, something must be wrong. Gaslight domestic product. It's called gaslight domestic product. <laughs> yeah. I think you just figured something <laughs> yeah. out. Can we coin this term? Yeah, I think we should. That's incredible. Yeah, that's gaslight what that, domestic that's, product. Yeah, that's what China that's does. That's the official yeah, name. Yeah, the GDP, yeah. Yeah. You can check in any journal. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> yeah. I like it. Yeah. Anyway, that's uh Yeah, that's that. There's some stuff down in mm-hmm. the description you can check out. Now, um we have to talk about this um this Chinese um military dude. Yeah, promise well, an update, right? Yeah, yeah, just a quick update on the guy, and it's very disappointing. But not that long ago, two U.S. servicemen were arrested for selling secrets to China. Now, both of them were Chinese nationals. But they were American citizens. Yeah, they, they were yeah. Chinese nationals who moved to America, then naturalized to become American, right. and then immediately joined the armed forces. And uh, then were approached by Chinese intelligence officers and even through their families and stuff and told, hey, listen, you know what, give us U.S. military secrets and we'll pay you. Mm. And who knows what other benefits they got. That's all up for speculation. But we'll talk about this guy in particular because he's just been sentenced. So what he did was he provided information about joint um, maneuvers and, and uh, military exercises uh, in the South China Sea to the to his Chinese handler and the Chinese intelligence. And also photographs and you know like information and, and tons of information about the radar systems in okinawa oh wow okay i didn't know the deets no i mean if you think about this right this is this is bad he's put a lot of people's lives in danger mm. because if the chinese government knows exactly the radar systems etc then they'll know how to circumvent them they'll right. know how to get around them they'll know how to find a way in they'll now be able to maybe disable them or whatever okay right. this is vital information right and you've got all those u.s uh servicemen based in okinawa right, right? yeah there's a u.s base there and never mind the joint uh, the joint military exercises that he gave detailed information about those are his compatriots right yeah his, his t- these, fellow soldiers yeah. yeah anyway so he was caught he was sentenced and you would think that this would get a big sentence yeah, it was supposed to be max 20 years, right? He got two years. And he was fined $5,000, $5,500. It's not even a slap on the wrist. It's insulting. Yeah. And I've got to say that, um, honestly, I'm incredibly disappointed because this sets a precedent. Um, I, as an American, am proud. I'm just saying you're saying mm. from an outside perspective. This yes. is a foreigner. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you can say this is a absolutely foreigner. Absolutely, I can say it as a foreigner. I don't give a shit. The That's thing is, okay. here's the thing. <laughs> I'm incredibly disappointed in this. That's a because, pretty lame sentence. Dude, what this is doing is it's advertising to every single potential Chinese spy out there. Yeah. Okay. Anyone who's been approached by a Chinese military intelligence official uh, and told to spy on the U.S. government because they're already inside the military, of which, of course, there are many potential. Yeah. Um, that if they get caught, they're going to get a slap on the wrist, maybe two years, maybe $5,000. Doesn't matter. This guy already was paid over fifteen thousand dollars by his uh, intelligence uh, operative, and that's just what they know about. Of course, he probably got paid more to his family in China or whatever. You never know. It's hard to tell. Who knows? Yeah, yeah it's that. I'm just making that up. You never know. But the thing is, there is no deterrent now. You can literally be a treasonous piece of shit and put American service men and women's lives on the line and only get two years in prison. Yikes. It's rubbish because there was not that long ago uh, somebody took a picture of a submarine and got like uh, 18 years or something. Keen says, so the guy made a profit from being paid 15K to that small fine. I know. <laughs> he made I know. a 10K profit. He made a $10,000 profit. Now uh, he gets two years of free room and board, you know, yeah. and it's not a deterrent. The guy sold out the U.S. military to Chinese military intelligence, and that's all he got was two years. Do better, America. Do better. Yes. This is not okay. This sets a very bad precedent. Okay, especially China is so motivated right now 
to steal military secrets. There have been for years. We all know that. All Chinese military tech is based on American stuff anyway and Soviet stuff. You know how that, this, this is a good point, the comment, he probably cooperated. Maybe that is, you know that whole thing when like when you cooperate, mm -hmm. maybe you like give up information or whatever. That does, you get yeah, I mean, fine. Maybe there's something going on behind closed doors. Who cares? I'm saying it's we what, don't know all of the It's what's out details. there in public. Yeah, it's like I'm saying like, I understand your perspective of putting it out there. Yeah. Like that's what people see. You know how many people have probably not, you know, they've been approached by the Chinese intelligence right. agencies and they're like, you know what? This is treason. I'm not yeah. going to do it. Yeah. But now that they see the treason only gets you two years, yeah. they're like, woohoo, I'll take that risk. It's such a small potential. It, that would be interesting though. Like just devil's yeah. advocate yeah. To, to think about if, if there was cooperation involved, could have led to something better, maybe a bigger find. You know what I mean? Well, maybe. Maybe. But it also opens the, the entire, you know, military up to... Um, potential spies now because it's easy sure and the repercussions are nothing it's two years and five thousand dollars yeah just about anyone can afford that yeah if you were offered a massive amount of money from the chinese military right now and you're in the military they say i'm going to give you a hundred thousand dollars take some pictures of the submarine and you're like sure why not hundred grand Psh, what's going to happen to me two years and five grand five oh, you're saying if that's yeah you're saying me i was like absolutely not. no not you i'm just saying how if dare you if you're like a kind of just a slightly a corrupt dude. feeling dude yeah if you're like I, you and, wake up you wake up on the corrupt side of the bed that day and you, you don't even necessarily need to be chinese you could be anyone right yeah, yeah. do you see the sets of bad the other dude remember there's two oh, he hasn't been sentenced yet yeah, okay maybe he'll get the big sentence who knows we'll find yeah. out yeah <laughs> yeah, anyway, you know, I'm just, I feel strongly for this, about this because, I you know, understand. I believe in justice. I, you under, also understand, though, the devil's advocate does warrant at least thinking about sure. that maybe it led to something yeah. even better. Maybe. Who knows? You know, hmm. Yeah, unfortunately, we'll, we'll probably never know. Anyway, listen, we've got to talk about the Chinese economy a little bit more, but uh, yeah. there's, it's, it's obviously far worse than the Chinese government ever wants to admit, okay? Because what we're seeing now is a huge amount of unemployment yeah. and dire straits for people. Yeah, this is where we're going to get into a little uh, a little detail about how bad it's been getting for people mm -hmm. in China. And there's a lot of uh, ways to measure that metric. Um, I think the whole, a popular topic in China right now amongst young people mm -hmm. uh, is the idea that the Chinese dream is not what we were told in school. Yes. The Chinese dream being that everyone deserves moderate prosperity. Everyone mm -hmm. deserves a job. Everyone deserves a, a livelihood. It doesn't. It's not crazy and, and unrealistic like the American dream, where you're gonna you might get rich, you might die trying, right? Sure. The Chinese dream is more secure. Let the government put your trust in the government, and yeah. they'll they'll take care of everything. You won't necessarily be wildly rich, but you'll have enough, and mm -hmm. you'll you'll be able to survive. The reason that that idea of the and by the way, doesn't that dream sound ridiculous? Yeah. Such a what there's no there's no hope there. That's kind of like I'll just let things happen. Hopefully the government works out. I know it's <laughs> like, how, who who trusts their government enough in any country? Sure, N uh, never mind China. Yeah, exactly. To take care of you, you know, mm -hmm. the country without any social programs. Mm -hmm. Anyway, bad. long story <clears throat> short, a lot of young people's conversation right now when they have these phenomenons like lie flat, let it rot, right? All of these apathy. We got a, I got a new one for you today. Oh, what? oh, that's coming yeah, soon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all of these, uh, all of these catchphrases that Chinese government bans are signs of an apathetic populace because the Chinese populace, the young Chinese populace, is an all-time uh, high unemployment rate. And so this idea that you're going to get the iron rice bowl where you're provided, you get rice and oil and everything you need to survive, you might not be super rich, but the government will take care of you, is vanishing before people's eyes yeah. right now. Mm -hmm. The economic downturn means that a lot of people, a huge swath of the population cannot find jobs anymore. Yeah. The ones that do find jobs out of university are not paying a rosy, painting a rosy picture either because their salaries are so dismal, it's not enough to support them, never mind their parents and grandparents, sure. especially being only children. Yeah. So this disillusionment is coming to the forefront, I think a lot faster than the Chinese government wanted it to. And we're seeing symptoms of just an enormous amount of people fleeing. Yes. An enormous amount of people running uh, from China to come to places like England, mm -hmm. the EU, uh, Australia is a massive one. Canada, probably the biggest. <laughs> sure. And uh, also in the US. Yeah, I thought we'd go over this. Now, listen, um, it's unprecedented. This last year, uh, within the first 11 months, uh, September, October, November, you know, 
We're talking over 31,000 uh, Chinese nationals were arrested crossing the border illegally into the USA, all yeah. right? Which is 10 times more than the year before. We're looking right, at so a huge, a 10 times increase. We're hu huge, huge, huge amounts coming over. And we're going to talk about this a little bit because it actually stems from something. Here you can see some photos from the Associated Press of literal caravans of Chinese people coming over the border illegally, okay? Um, and this is because they're all taking part of this new thing called run shui, shui, okay, which means it's kind of a funny uh, play on words because I think run means to like moisten something like that. But oh, because yeah. it's run, you know, and it's spelled in pinyin oh, r u n, like run. Like run. <laughs> so it's basically run, study running, okay, or runology. It's it's, study running. It's the study of absconding and fleeing from and abandoning China, okay. This is something that's new. And this is something that I did talk about it in a previous video, but this is something that's really caught on. All right. The Chinese economy is so bad that middle class people, not even just the poor are down on their luck, but middle class and even well to do people yeah. are simply doing runology. <laughs> okay. Runology. Yeah, this runology, is which is the Sexy study sad, no. of fleeing China and coming to the US illegally. Okay. How this works is it's now become a, like a cottage industry. Yeah. It's. Pretty simple. Um, there are a number of ways you can do this, and it's all out there on the open on the Chinese internet. That's the thing that's, again, um, kind of mind-boggling about the Chinese internet is that you can get information on how to do illegal things just out there. Okay, yes. I did a video about how birth tourism was a thing, how they teach you and coach you how to cross the border and lie about the fact that you're going on a holiday in order to have birth in America, for instance, so you can open up trust funds and get your kid to have a, an American passport and all yeah. that. You know, that's out there. It's out there. Yeah, you yeah. can go read it. Sure. I translated some websites on my video. Now, with Runology, it's the same. They coach people on how to get to America illegally. Now, there's a couple of ways. The two most popular ways to do it is, number one, is you go down to Ecuador because you don't need a, a visa if you're a Chinese national. Oh, it's visa-free for yeah. Chinese. You pop in there, and then they've got a whole route that you take. But it's all step-by-step -step on social media. They tell you how to do it. They tell you which place to go to, what hotels to stay in, uh, which guides to hire, which buses to take. And there's a whole process. It is a pretty long and arduous journey, but it's all set out for you. So if you're willing to go through like a, about a month of discomfort traveling here and there and taking a, a, a boat and a this and a that, you can get all the way up to the border. And they've got people that help you along the way and make sure that you, you'll make it there. And then they tell you what to do, when, which I'll tell you in a minute, once you get to the American border. The other way, if you've got money, is you simply fly into Europe and from Europe into Mexico, and then you can just cross from Mexico. So, you know, it depends on who you are, what your background is. There's different routes for you to take. But at the end of the day, what they do tell you to do is that you must get arrested by border uh, border patrol, mm. ICE or whatever. But you must come through San Diego. Oh, okay. 98% of all the arrests of uh, Chinese nationals crossing the border have been in San Diego in September of last year anyway. So what you do is you get arrested because then they will ask and then you do the asylum seeking thing, right? And oh, they, so they're all going for asylum. Yeah, that's yeah. what they say, okay? Gotcha. Then they will say, well, where is your destination? Like, what's the address that you're intending to go to? And they'll all say, like, New York. Mm -hmm. And then what they do is they give you a court date to arrive on in New York. Like, And the system's so backed up, it's, like, mm -hmm. a long ways away. So they give you a court date. Like, you must appear in court at this and this and this place. They, they're Catholic uh, charity organizations and stuff. They put them up for the, the night in a hotel or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the people that are coming over the border, they've got money prepared to take a flight directly to New York. Mm -hmm. And then they've already got jobs lined up. Oh, gotcha. Okay, so there's, because I told you, it's a cottage industry, right? So there are a lot of businesses that want cheap labor. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so jobs in construction, jobs in restaurants and things like that are already lined up for them. Right. All illegal jobs, obviously. You can't work legally, you know, but it's all set up. And so when you do this runology thing, you study, it's basically the study of how to get to and enter America illegally. And then you've got work and you've got a accommodation, everything's set up for you, mm. right? That's why you're seeing this being such an attractive thing for people to leave their lives in China, go through this a fairly arduous journey if you take the Ecuadorian route, or of course, uh, you know, if you've got some money, you just go. How does this to Ecuador Mexico. thing work? I don't understand it's in South America. Yeah, you come up through South America. Yeah, but what do you do after Ecuador? Go walk in the ocean? No, they take boats and stuff. Oh, 
gotcha. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then they've got you go through the Darien Gap yeah. and everything. Oh, gotcha. Through the there is a jungle section where you have to walk through the oh. jungle, but they have guides. Rough. Yeah, look, it's it's rough. It's uh. it's not like a. Uh, let's lay back and take a tour. Yeah. Okay, but it's also something that's completely laid out and it's all ready to do. Right. right? Uh, anyway, so you make it all the way up into into the US and then you get an opportunity to go and live your life, right? Mm. So um, this has become an attractive thing, so attractive that we've had so many people come over the border. Here's a little the wake thing. Up. President Biden's meeting with China's president. We turn now to a story about the big increase in Chinese migrants coming through the U.S. border down in Mexico. Border Patrol agents arrested more than 24,000 Chinese people for crossing the U.S. southern border illegally over the past year through September. That's more than 10 times higher than the previous year and part of the overall rise in illegal border crossings that has made headlines. Elizabeth Palmer shows us why the Chinese migrants are willing to risk everything for a chance to make it to America. Yeah, so basically what, what I was talking to you before, this is the, the reality of it, is you've got so many people leaving China to come to America illegally, not only America, other countries too. Yeah. But that's just an indication of how bad the Chinese economy is, and especially after COVID where they locked down all these businesses and stuff. Yeah, I just want to read a couple of quotes. This makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. um, because think about it. You wouldn't leave unless you had a reason to leave. Like a yeah. 10 times increase is crazy. In a year. In a year, right? Yeah. 10 times. So think about this. I just want to read a couple of quotes from that BBC article, which pertains to this. Yeah. It says, the entire life of young people has been shaped by the idea, if you study hard, uh, then at the end of your hard work, there will be a job and a highly paid, decent life waiting for you. Yeah. And now they find out that this promise is no longer working. So what do you do? Well, you... <laughs> In China, you're faced with Chinese propaganda, which tells you everywhere else is bad. Yeah. But at the same time, reality creeps through, right? People can still talk to each other. People still have family abroad. They mm -hmm. know that things aren't that bad and that there's opportunities, right? Yeah. So people end up realizing that, hey, what's better than abject unemployment and no future for me and government censorship and increased government crackdowns? Yeah. Probably going to somewhere in the West. Right? Yep. And that's that's just becoming a more and more popular idea for a lot of people. It's correct. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. And there's another quote. Uh, uh, the jobs in China, they don't have good prospects for your future. They offer low salaries and are, you are easily replaceable. That's why most people would rather stay at home. And that makes sense. There's so many jobs now that you don't have job security in China, like whatsoever. Whereas there is a huge, huge market for jobs abroad, especially in places like the U.S. Yeah. So if you're, offer, if you're stuck in a situation where over 20% of people your age cannot get a job, and then when you do get a job, you're replaced by someone that's more... I don't know, uh, fits the position better, like yeah. this with no repercussions, mm -hmm. of course you're going to leave. Yeah. Of course you're going to leave, right? It's pretty crazy. Especially when it's laid out for you on social media. Think about it. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. If you're in a bad situation and you start seeing popping all over up on your social media, go to America, this is how you do it. And you've got obviously companies profit from this. People yeah. pay money. Yeah. It's not like you're just going to go there by yourself. The, you pay guides and you pay people to like sort you all out and get you on the on the road. Um, I was reading, you know, the people that fly into Mexico and stuff anyway pay upwards of 50,000 US dollars for this whole process. Right. You know, the cheaper ones, you still have to pay people along the way. So it's it's a money scheme. It's, it's a cottage sure. industry, right? Sure. But at the end of the day, this is what happens. But there's been a pretty interesting uh, case that's come out of all of this. And I wanted to talk about this because there's this guy who is, um, I don't know, it's hard to, to really explain the situation. But he's both irritating, but also a very good, um, almost propaganda for America, if you want to put it that way, you know, which uh, I'll talk about in a minute. Remember, by the way, the Chinese people crossing the border illegally, they want to get arrested because it's part of the whole process. Oh, gotcha. They're not like running over the border to try and hide in the bushes or something. They actually, the whole purpose is once they're over the border, they walk up to the Border Patrol and be like, hey, I'm here. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Remember, that's part of this whole Ranology, um, right. like, checklist. There's just right. a, a playbook, a checklist, right? Gotcha. So I wanted to talk about uh, this guy. Uh, he calls himself Professor Fat Man Ding. <laughs> okay. Cool. All right. So now Professor Fat Man Ding has become a celebrity in China. Um, and basically, he 
came to America, the exact circumstances under which he came to America, I don't know if he was one of these Renology guys or not, but he came to work and then he was and dissatisfied with the jobs he was offered because he was offered like basically construction work and restaurant work. So he's like, Lower screw it. Stuff, yeah. He was like, screw it. I'm not going to be Lower taken advantage stuff. of. I'm just going to go out there and be homeless. So he made a name and he's got over 2 million followers in China. He's a, he's a celebrity. Mm. Okay. So he's got a massive following in China. He live streams being homeless in America. Mm. Okay. But he... He's both been hailed as a hero, and he's also pissed a lot of people off at the same time. Okay, because what he does is, I'll show you a couple of clips, is he's basically a food critic for homeless hands. That cake looked good. Yeah, that cake <laughs> did look good. I'm surprised at the quality of food that homeless people get. Yeah. But again, it's a great advert for America, isn't it? Right. Because you would never be able to get something like that in China. No, no. Well, there is no homeless hand. Yeah, there isn't. Yeah. And I mean, so anyway, he goes around and I uh, took this from his Billy Billy. He's got a Billy Billy account. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can see, like, goes around. I, I want, I want, I'm very, very hungry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, oh. How to love what you name so he, he live streams. He's a live streamer. Mm -hmm. um, I'm still a little baffled by the whole homeless live streamer t phenomenon. Is, you yeah, you said it's a real thing. Yeah, I'm in just the like, US as well. There's yeah. a bunch of American homeless live streamers. To it's, me, I guess it's entertaining for a lot of people, you know what I mean? But it's also so. it's, it's a struggle because it's dramatic, right? Mm. Yeah, well, uh, basically... Uh, his day goes like this, at least in the beginning, is he, he lives in a tent, mm -hmm. you know, he makes a mess there, the, the local government comes and puts a notice saying they're clean, going to clean up, he moves mm -hmm. his tent to the other side of the road, they clean up, he moves his tent back, he goes to the public library to charge all his devices and stuff, and then he goes, hangs around in Skid Row and tries all the different, um, you know, all you can eat buffet type things that are out there for homeless people, which is, fanc you know, it is fascinating to look at, because mm -hmm. unless you've actually you know, done it yourself. Mm. You don't know what's out there, right? What's up? 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 So he just goes and he's a, he's a food critic and he'll also be like, mm, I don't like this coffee, throws it away and says, I can be picky here in America because, you know, there's so much choice. If you if you read the articles about him. Right. But anyway, he started to get both like praised. Every, every other person that live streams on this. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. homeless anyway. people, right? Yeah. yeah. But he became, um, like I said, a, a celebrity in China. So yeah. you had a group of people like cheering him on saying like, yes, take advantage of America, screw them. But then you also have another group of people, especially Chinese people abroad who are like, listen, dude, you're giving us a bad name. You're making sure. us lose face here. What are you doing? So he's, when he started to get his pushback, he's did this really annoying thing, which is uh, he started to go around pretending he's Japanese. Again, like I was saying, this is a great, it's, it's great like advertisement for America, how nice America is. Because if you're homeless, you can eat like a freaking king, you know? I yeah. can't even cook a chicken that nice. I know you can't. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I know you could cook way better. I mean, let's be yeah. honest. Being homeless is horrible. Of course and it's that's horrible. A horrible struggle and horrible. But he's obviously... I think a lot of people here are able to figure out how it works. And I think a lot of people are charitable. Yes. And that's nice. I think that's really good that people have an outlet to have a little less comfortable... Or a little more comfortable life. Well, that that's scenario. what I'm... That's the point I'm trying to make here is yeah. that in China, you would never get this. No. So no. when I'm saying it's a good advert for America, it is because... The, yeah. People that are in dire straits in China, they look at this. In comparison, like, yeah. They're like, holy crap. There's you no know? comparison there. Yeah, it's like, holy yeah. crap, look at what you can get if you're homeless. Look how well America takes care of the homeless people. Yeah. You know what I mean? In comparison to China, obviously. Yeah. You know, so he does his food critic thing. He's just saying, oh, it's so delicious, everybody. It's so good. He, I mean, he does it well. Like, yeah. He's entertaining. Yeah. I like the whole food review aspect. Yeah, it's, it's like very, it t it's a talk about a novel idea, by yeah. the way. It's yeah. like all the, the homeless food handouts, like which one is better? Yeah, exactly. It's pretty fun. Uh, yeah, it's, it's novel. Anyway, like I said, he started to get some pushback. So then, it, you know, 
the thing is, there's this massive like uh, rivalry between China and Japan. There's this hatred toward yeah. Japan and China because of what happened during World War II, right? We all know that. We covered it on the show. So when he started to get pushback from Chinese people, he started to do this thing pretending to be Japanese, obviously to curry favor with the nationalists again, you know? Yeah, I don't um, think the- he. I think that's a thing to save uh, your reputation amongst the Chinese following, yeah. because a lot of them will be upset that you know, hey, we're supposed to be wealthy, and you know what I mean. Yeah. So I get it. Uh, yeah. At the at the same time, though, like if you are doing that, it it means you know what you're doing is bad. No, no, I'm I, that part. You, know? you shouldn't you shouldn't be pretending to be another nationality anyway. Yeah. I mean, I guess if it's, it's if your safety relies on it, I think that's fine. Yeah. Oh, yes, 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 yeah. Well, let's take a look. Oh yeah, hang on. He's, thing is, again, he's made a, himself a celebrity showing how you can take advantage of things in America. You know, like filling up a gallon <coughs> thing of soda. Uh, or whatever. Uh, um, and he's, he, he shows people like you can use a, uh, you can buy something and then break it and take it in for a replacement at a shop, that kind of thing. He's become famous in China for showing how you can kind of Game the system in America. That makes sense. Uh, I want Mew. 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 Oh, okay. I come from Japan. What does she want? Show, show, TV show, 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 很开心啊 God bless you Thank you Thank you Hey miss In fact You are very very gorgeous I love you God bless you 兄弟们要不完了啊要不完了 I want drink I think he's got a good attitude He's nice people I like the God bless you I like the you're gorgeous Thank you sir Thank you miss Don't need to shout it at them Let's be honest, it's a Chinese live streamer, bro. That's what you do. I come yeah. from Japan. Okay. Yeah. That's how Chinese live streaming works. You know, yeah, I've never been over there. Oh. I would like to go over there, though. Okay. Let's get it! <laughs> nice. Pick up some good... Uh, yeah. Some good uh, colloquialisms, too. Yeah, anyway, so uh, people obviously became famous and people donated a camper to him with, like, cool. solar power and everything. That's great. So he's still, he's, like, continuing his uh, he's homeless leveling up. Ger- journey across, uh, looks like, Southern California. He's in uh, downtown L.A. is where he started. And he's basically now got this camper, which he, he's got some friends, I guess, that have joined him now and... Drive, drive him around and stuff and take him places and uh, uh, he has his little camper which he I think it's cool that he's got up. a following and I, and I like that he's improving his situation I think yeah. that's a good thing yeah. and again I think it shows the hospitality of it. and like whoever he runs into people helping out that's a great thing that's, well, a, that's, that's positive energy. That's what I was saying. This is uh, propaganda, good propaganda for America. Yeah. Because it shows you... <laughs> but it's not propaganda. Well, it's soft power. Yeah, soft it, power. It shows you that, you know, China can constantly goes on about how crappy America mm. is and look at the homeless people on the streets and all that kind of thing. But it shows you that it's possible if you come to America as a homeless person mm-hmm. to not only be able to eat well... But to improve your life to a yeah. point where look at him now, he's, he's basically going on a road trip adventure across Southern California in a camper. Yeah. You know, he's got a lot of opportunity and it shows you that America is a great place. Yeah. At I mean, if you, it, in a simplified version, obviously people have their own struggles and it's terrible, but to mm-hmm. see someone improve on their situation and be able to gain an audience doing so, and at least for, for the most part, what I'm seeing sp- spread nice positive energy, it's a good thing. Yeah. Um, it's interesting to see that he's got such a big following in China because you'd think that China wouldn't like this. And I think at the beginning they like it because he's showing the other homeless encampments and the things that China's always pumping out there. I think it's morphing into something else. I think it's morphing into a situation where it's kind of like, wow, this is actually really cool. (laughs) Everyone's rooting for the guy. Like everyone's like helping out. Yeah. And it kind of, it's just something unattainable in China because of the government. Yes. And that's kind of maybe the opposite effect of what was intended. Yes, in the I think that's probably, and for, that's for the Chinese government. That's why I'll be honest. I've got very mixed feelings about the guy because when he's been around for a while now, at least sure. uh, you know I've been seeing his stuff pop up for a couple months now, right? Yeah. And in the beginning, I was kind of pissed off that he's going around uh, 
flaunting how easy it is to take advantage of the system, right? Because mm. he, you know, I've shown some positive. He does stuff that most normal people wouldn't do because it's just like not the thing to do. Yeah, uh, I'll be honest with you. Yeah. That's exactly what I see on on mm -hmm. uh, streamer homeless streamer TikTok. Mm -hmm. That's exactly the same thing. Yeah, sure. But I mean, he's advertising it to China. Sure. He's like, sure. you know, come yeah, here. I see you're you saying, come yeah. come it's here, like to two, two million people in China. Yeah. Come to America, and you can, you know, basically take advantage sure. of this and you know, game the system this way. So I wasn't really like impressed, but I got gotcha. you. Like I said, I got mixed feelings because yeah. the more it went on, the more um, I could see that it. To had a positive ending. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It shows that he was homeless for a, a month or two, mm -hmm. like messing about doing this stuff. And he got a huge following and he's got people looking after him, setting him up with a camper yeah. van, taking him around. He's got like a huge thing going. And again, it just shows you that the opportunities in America are real for anyone. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sure. Really, they are. So that's why I'm a bit mixed on the guy. But either way, it's a complete symptom as to what's going on in China. Because if China's economy was doing great, you wouldn't have people like him coming. Yeah, it's just to, to bring it back to that. Can you put on that BBC thing? Yeah, I'll get I back. just want to show the... Um... See if this goes anywhere. Okay. There we go. Oh, but this one? Yes. This goes back to the Gen Z thing. It's yeah. young people that we're seeing exacerbated with the problems in China right now. Yeah. It's the young people, and, and this is interesting because mm -hmm. usually we saw the old people struggling in China. You still do. You go to any rural village, it's the old people that are Dude, bent over. That's horrible to see because it's <laughs> people that are like older than your grandparents carrying sticks with like a, you know, heavy yeah. produce or whatever, you know, toiling in the farms. Yeah. Because there's no social programs. There's that help nothing, them. yeah. So, and we've covered this before, where they're getting yeah. almost no stipends. You know, yeah. it's like it's life is dire for them. But that was that mm. was the dire generation, and all the young people when we were in China was like, well, when they're gone, when our grandparents are gone, and our great grandparents are gone, life will improve, and mm. things like not not that they don't love them, but it's like that's kind of what's holding everything back because mm -hmm. they grew up in the hard times, but it's not hard times anymore. Yeah. But now we're seeing. The old people and then the young people be like, life is getting bad here. Yeah, it's getting bad to where we need to seek uh, see, seek shelter elsewhere. Yeah, and th those problems are manifesting now. We're seeing them actually in data and in yeah. immigration and whatever you know, yeah. like people leaving. And and that's the stat that China really doesn't want people to see because yeah. then the utopian dream is it's not real. Yeah, it's not real. I I can't remember which body it was, whether it was the UN or something, but they um estimated that there'll be at least 310,000 Chinese people leaving this year, immigrating this year yeah. from, from China, at least. Yes. And that's probably quite realistic if you think about it, uh, legally and illegally, you know, yeah. both. Yeah. So, yeah, that's uh, pretty much it for the show today, guys. Yeah. We're going to move on to the Q&A. So yes. this is Yamcha, where we answer your questions and you question our answers. Uh, remember that this stays up live now. And of course, on the weekend, on Monday, we cut it out of the show. Mm -hmm. But uh, let's get into it. It's time to loosen the tie. It's Friday. If you're not sticking around with us now, or if you happen to be watching next week, stay awesome. We'll see you next time. Um, yes. But for everyone else, let's get into it. Uh, Nikhil Z with a movie recommendation. Thank you. I can't pronounce that. Oh, uh, yeah. 